Okay. Welcome back, guys. I do apologise that you've missed the uh, first little bit. However, I had a slight problem with the camera. But basically, all we've done is just given it a light brushing of grey on the bottom, um, watered down enough so that it will sink into everything, and then just a first coat of brown on the sticks and the wood. Now what we're doing is we're just applying the red over the metal. Obviously, if you can not get this on the rest of it, that'd be great. Because otherwise we're going to have to go back over and touch up the grey. Especially with the dark red colour. Sorry, I do apologise, is that a picture there? Especially with the dark red colour, it's going to take quite a bit to cover up. On the wood, it's not as important if we get the red on it. As the wood is going to have a red... Uh, sorry, we're going back over the red with a brown anyway, so we can then tidy up the wood at that stage. Now here you can see, if you can, I didn't quite get in enough with the um, spray paint, so I'm just watering down the paint a bit to help it flow on there. Going over, and then we're going to do the back of this. And all it is is we just want it the same as the other rust effects we've done, nice and red. Now, the last bit that we've got to do here is, in fact, the mesh. And to do that, I find the easiest way is to have something to lean it on. So, painting against it. So, also, make sure your paint's nice and watered down. And like I said, don't worry if you're a bit of red on the wood. We'll tidy that up on the highlights afterwards. And, uh, it doesn't matter if you don't coat all of this, it's just we want a red effect on the actual mesh. So turn it over now, go to a new spot, otherwise the paint that's just run through will go all over your wood. And then just run it down again. And of course, as you can see, it's filling in some of the mesh at the moment. So all we'll do is, after we've done this, put a bigger piece of cardboard behind it and blow against it and it blows all of the paint out. Make sure you put the ink there though, otherwise it will get very messy as you spray it over everything. So, back in a bit. Okay, and um, welcome back. First off, I'll apologise about the noise in the background. However, that is the deer dogs prattling around still. Right, so we're not quite dried yet but we're most of the way there so what we'll first off start with is we're just going to put another layer on all of the spikes and it doesn't matter if it's thick or not as long as there's not really any lumps on it and don't forget to do both sides of them so it's just because we want these to look a lot darker than the wood for the signs and such and then after we've painted on to all of these, all we're going to do is brush off a bit of the paint and give a light dry brushing over the metal areas, at which stage we can then dry brush back over the wooden posts and such, which covers up any red there. Now at the end of this I will point out what I plan on doing rather than spending all the time worrying about the state at the um, base and the grey is I'm going to go back over it with a fine brush and touch up any pieces that have been caught. But at the moment we're just getting the brown and applying it onto there. And now you probably can't see that very well at the moment. but hopefully at the pictures at the end you'll see it perfectly and the last thing we have to do is of course a little bit of silver 
just to bring out the shine. So, brush a little bit onto the mesh and you can even stipple it on to the metal. So, and here we are back with the finished barricade all painted up. As you can see, I did the touch ups as well. Now, if you look carefully at it, you can just about see where the layers are on the ply board, and I think that works quite well for um, looking as a stone effect. Of course, the rust has come up quite nicely as well on the actual mesh and on the corrugators. And that was just one idea. I do apologise if the tripod goes, by the way. I've got the dear dogs bouncing around the room crazily. Um, another idea, of course, is you can do one which is just spikes. This one I did was on a, another thin piece of plyboard. And then I ran hot glue all over it for the effect. Um, after drilling the holes and gluing in the cocktail sticks. One other thing I've done, if you look at the bottom of it, if, is I actually, um, when I was making this, I was doing it all on top of a piece of uh, plastic, which was a plastic bottle. Um, you could, of course, use greaseproof paper or something, but then that gives you a nice, even flat surface as well, which slightly lips out at the edge and saves you on some sanding and such. So, if I put that there. Another idea is a long mesh um, fence and such. This one of course is all quite torn up and everything. But what you will notice is if you look carefully, let's see if I can get that into focus, there is actually fishing line around each of the tops which on this one it was actually hot glued on and the fishing line Wrap around like that has quite nicely hidden hot glue. Um, another idea that we've got, this one's still drying, is just a small um, wall here with one side textured and the other side just covered over with corrugation. I do apologise for the bouncing. I'm looking after the dog and he wants all my attention. Anyway, so there's another small one. The same sort of ideas again. And then just for a bit more craziness, why not go a little bit out of the way and do something completely different. For instance, this one here. If I just raise the tripod a bit to show you it better. And there we go. And this one has been done with a dead tree, which was one of um, DMS Craft, DM, um, DMS Craft, DMS Scotty's uh, YouTube videos. I believe it was how to make a zombie apocalypse dead tree. And then there's a couple of little mushrooms on it, just for adding in <clears throat> a bit more orkiness. Once again, I actually did that as a video for how to paint them. And there is a video by DMG Info on how to actually make them. There are then just a couple of little off-cut pieces of bamboo, which I've used as small little um, leaves of plants. And all these bits dangling out, which I like to think represent vines and such. Um, are actually just pieces of plastic wire wrapping that you get with the toys and such where it's a piece of metal wire inside and then the plastic on the outside and um, that's how that's turned out so some of this stuff so there's all your different ideas for you I hope some of them are helpful and um, I hope some of you actually use these ideas for making terrain for your own games in the meantime, take care guys, speak to you soon, bye bye.